Hello viewers, this is your favorite station, Chris Lasco TV, coming your way with another wonderful session of our programs called Cutting Deep Into The Word. When we say Cutting Deep Into The Word, it is just a scheduled 30 minutes time of fellowship into the Word. Paul says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the Word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. This is exactly what this program is set on achieving. In bringing to our audience the very word of His grace, which is able to build them up in Christ. This program is scheduled to take place on every Tuesday, exactly 4 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. And I know you will not want to miss out on this program. We have our wonderful sponsors, Chris Lasco, Multimedia, Mayobi Studio, and Deep Search Consult. If you have interest in sponsoring this program, you can contact us on our numbers below on the screen. We are streaming live on Facebook, Chris Lasco TV, and YouTube, Chris Lasco TV. Thank you. You will be going for a short commercial break. You will be right back. Welcome back, viewers. You are welcome to Cutting Deep into the Word. Today will be our first session of Cutting Deep into the Word. But before then, I would like us to say a word of prayer before we begin in searching into the Scriptures. So wonderful, you shine. So glorious, you shine. Lord, I stand in eye of you. You shine. So glorious, you shine. Lord, you are so wonderful, you shine, so glorious you shine, Lord, I stand in awe of you, you shine. So glorious you shine, precious name, oh how sweet, oh perfect, the joy of heaven, precious name, oh how sweet. Oh, perfect, the joy of heaven, the hope of heaven, the joy of heaven, yes, you are the hope of heaven, the joy of heaven, the hope of heaven. The joy of heaven, yes, you are the hope of heaven, the joy of heaven. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, King Eternal. We bless you for such a wonderful time of fellowship into your word. We thank you for the spirit of understanding. And we bless your name for your insight. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Beloved, today we are going to learn about the realities of the vine. The realities of the vine. This is an essential topic the Lord Jesus Christ taught his disciples. For which reason we would want to 
dive deeper into what the Lord Jesus taught his disciples. You see, very often it is said among many tribes that the last words of someone who is ready to die or someone who is set to die is very key or important to them that were privileged to have heard the word. Today we are going to share certain discourse that the Lord Jesus Christ had with his disciples on the very night, on the very day that he was to be delivered to be killed. Let's open our scriptures to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. We are reading from verse 1. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. The Lord Jesus Christ is teaching his disciples about fruition or fruitfulness. And the Lord Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Before we start to dive deeper into what the Lord meant by saying that he is the true vine and his father is the husband man, let's see where this very discourse took place. This very discourse took place in the Garden of Gethsemane. On the very day that the Lord Jesus Christ was to be delivered to, to, to the Jews to be killed. Garden of Gethsemane is a garden of a vine or vine plant where if it was today, in our day, we would say that it was a factory of wine or wine factory where the those who work in the factory obtain their vine from. Usually, vine is a plant which bear grapes fruit, usually used to make wine, like wine like champagne, are made from grapes. So this is a garden of vine plant. And the Lord Jesus Christ was walking through this vine plant one of the most fruitful plant in the world is the vine plant, very fruitful. And the Lord, having this perfect example to show his disciples the level of fruition, he wanted his disciples to know that indeed he is. The Lord says that I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. What does it mean for the Lord Jesus Christ to say that he is the true vine? Mean, meaning that in comparative terms, th there, are, there have been vines or there have, there have been a vine for which the Lord says that he is the true vine in comparison to maybe other vines which have come into the world or other fruitful personalities which have arisen maybe among or in the old, the Lord Jesus Christ comparatively says that he is the true among or amidst all of them. He is the true epitome of fruition. He is the true vine. All right, I want us to read something from the book of Genesis to reveal why the Lord says he is the true. In other words, the word is that he is the real, the real vine. Meaning that there had been a picture of the true vine, maybe somewhere in the scriptures. I want us to read from the book of Genesis chapter 49, the verse 22. I'll read from Genesis 49 verse 22 from my King James Bible.
Genesis 49, verse 22. Joseph is a fruitful bow. In other words, Joseph is a fruitful vine. Even a fruitful vine by a well, whose branches run over the well. Joseph is a fruitful bow. Even a fruitful bow by a well, whose branches run over the wall. So Jesus, in comparison to Joseph, who in the old had been a picture or painting a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ in fruit, in fruition or in fruitfulness. Jesus said he is the true vine. You see, in the old, when we pick the story of Joseph, for which his father, Jacob, blessed him to be the fruitful bow. For everything that Joseph had in contact with, for every person that Joseph had in contact with, bore record of Joseph that indeed, when I had contact with Joseph, there have been fruition or fruitfulness. That is who we called a fruitful bow or a fruitful vine. But in this context, the Lord Jesus said he is, is, the, he is the real fruitful bow or the real vine in comparison to even that which we saw in the Old Testament. The Lord said he is actually the real epitome of fruitfulness, the real personality of fruitfulness. The Lord says he is the true vine. And the father is the husband man. What does it mean for the Bible to say that the father is the husband man? The Lord Jesus said, said and my father is the husband man. First, what we would want to explain is the word husband man. Usually in the old King James version of the Bible, using the old translation of the English, when we say husband man is... Currently, what we will, see, we will term as maybe a farmer or a cultivator. It says, for my father is the farmer, or my father is the husband man. Usually, husband man is from two words, husband and man. Usually, the one who, produce, who produces seed for planting is the one called the husband man. So, in other words, if... The Lord Jesus Christ says that God is the husband man, meaning that he is that which produced the seed for the fruition or for that fruitful plant. God is the one who planted Christ, who is the true vine in this contest. In other words, we can also say that God is or the father is an industrious person. In place of the husband man, he is an industrious person. In other words, he is someone who is delighted in fruition. Someone who is delighted. All what he desires is that he, he, he plants something which is fruitful. He plants something which actually bears fruit. That is why the Lord will not plant any other fruit or any other plant than that of the vine plant, seeing that it is one of the fruitful plants. Hallelujah. Verse 2, it says, Every plant in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purge it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Hallelujah. We want to dive deep, deeper into this very verse 2. The Bible says, every branch in that fruitful vine, which beareth not fruit, the Bible says, he taketh away. Before that, I want to give you an analogy. For instance, our, in our certain, Ghanaian certain, one of the fruitful plants, in in area of agric is cocoa. All right, the, a farmer of a cocoa plant will not just get up, go to the cocoa farm, 
when he sees a branch which is not bearing fruit and cut it straight off away. No, meaning that that person, a description given that the father is an industrious person, a husbandman wouldn't fit into that contest. Because somebody who is whose desire is fruition will not just stand up and cut off a branch which he can work on it to bear fruit. Mind you, the, the fruit we are talking about is the vine plant, which is very fruitful, for which I am giving an analogy. In, in our setting, we will say that a cocoa plant, which is very fruitful, will not just be cut off, be removed. A branch on the cocoa plant will not just be removed for the reason being that within a certain period of time, it is not yielding its fruit. Then that will mean that the word take it away would have or could have another meaning which will not really give us the translation that he cut off. Just as other translation put it in a way that the farmer will cut off every branch that beareth not fruit. Alright, so let's go into the Greek origin for the word he take it away. He take it away. The word is iro. In this context, verse 2, we have two kinds or two types of pruning or two types of patching in this context. The first kind of patching is the word iro. Iro. And the second kind of patching is the word katairo. You see, just from iro. Iro and katairo. All right. The, the word katairo means to raise up or to lift out of the ground. Let me give you a typical situation in the vine plant. The vine plant is a type of plant which has usually a weak stem. So sometimes, it, this is what happens, sometimes some of the branches fell off. Though they are attached to the plant, they fell off to the ground. And for that reason, because they are covered with dust and other weeds, they, or they, they, they come to the point where they are not bearing fruit anymore. But the Bible says that when the farmer of this vine plant comes to see this, he does not say that, hey, this branch is not bearing fruit. No. He says that, hey, you are not bearing fruit, but I will not cut you away. I would, by all means, and in all situations, make sure that this very branch is bearing fruit. So this is what... The Bible says the industrious farmer, the industrious man, the husband man does. He says he raised up or he lift up, he iro, iro, he lift up that very branch. You see, the word iro could also mean that cut off. But in this context, seeing the, the importance of fruition or talking about fruitfulness and the importance of the vine tree and the fruitfulness of that vine tree, it could not possibly mean that the farmer would straightway cut off the branch from the tree. But rather, in the other translation, he says he lift it up, he raised it up. So this is what the farmer does in order that that branch which is on the floor, not bearing fruit, ensures that that branch bears fruit. He raised that branch up and cleans it, which is another realm of pattern, that is iro. He raised it up and cleans it in order that this branch will start bearing fruit. All right, so he says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit. Let's read it in this way. He said, he raised it up. And every branch that beareth fruit, the Bible says that he purged it. That is another realm of 
Persian, which is the word katairo, just from the word airo. Katairo, in other words, it is a hard realm of Persian, higher than that of airo, which is bringing forth much fruit. So he says that he paired it that it may bring forth more fruit. You see, in comparison to the first arrow, the katairo is leading to the production of more or much fruit. So the level of katairo leads to the production of much fruit. You see, so you can definitely now understand it very well. In the, so this very teaching is not, in the first place, it is not even teaching about the realm of heaven and hell, or a person will be cut off to go to hell. No. He says that every branch in me, you see, meaning that that branch which is attached to him. So every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he arrow, he raise up, he perch. That is one realm of patching, which I would also want us to use the same word, patch. Or in other words, clean, raise up and clean. So every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he says, he patches. He patches. That is the first realm of patching. So you definitely know that every branch which is initially not bearing fruit, flat on the ground, when it is raised up and cleaned, the level of fruition would not, cannot be compared to that which is already bearing fruit and is perched. So the Bible says that when this branch which is not bearing fruit, in other words, on the ground, dirty, when it is raised up, when it is arrow, it will start bearing fruit. But that which is already bearing fruit, the Bible says that the husbandman purges it, cleans it, in order that it will bear much fruit, giving us a distinction, which is the word much, giving us a distinction of the realm of Iro to the realm of Katairo. Hallelujah. I believe you now really get the verse 2 of this very scripture not speaking in terms of anybody who does not bear fruit would be completely cut off from the branch. No, it will be, he will be purged so that that very branch can bear fruit. So instance, when a Christian who is not in time bearing fruit, that which the Lord desires for him, for, for his work, the Bible says that the Lord or the, 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 the Lord of, of, of the vineyard or the husbandman would not cut off this Christian or would not cut off this believer who is not in time bearing fruit. But what he does, he does is that he raises him up. He gives him motivation. He, he purges that Christian or that believer in order that he will start bearing much fruit. In the realm of he that is bearing fruit, in time, the Lord would want to want him or her to bear much fruit. He said that is what the Lord is pleased in. Because he desired that the, the believer already bearing fruit bears much and more fruit. He says that he gives him a harder realm of passion which is katairo, in order that this Christian would bear much and much fruit. Hallelujah. All right, let's continue. So at this realm, I would want us to read the scripture so that we will get the full understanding. So he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Two, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he purges. Or in other words, he raised up. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, he purges it. In other words, he gives it more purging that it may bring forth 
more fruit. Hallelujah. All right, verse 3, he said, Now ye are now clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So the Lord Jesus said, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. All right, so verse 3 is giving us a description of how the patching process takes place. He says, now ye are clean. So, now ye are clean. Remember we said that the realm of Iru is the realm where the branch which is not bearing fruit, in other words, has fallen. So, the farmer raises it up and cleans it in order that this branch will, would bear much fruit. But verse 3 says that, now ye are clean. So, what actually is used in ironing the branch which is on the ground, dirty on the ground, not bearing fruit. The word said, it says, the word. He said, now ye are clean through or by the word, through the word which I have spoken unto you. He said, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. He said, now ye are clean through the teaching. So you see, the Lord has Giving unto us his word, which is able to purge us, which is able to clean us unto or uh, bring us unto fruition. And the word is logos. Logos. He says that word which is precisely given for teaching and for your maturity in Christ. That is the word called Logos. He said, now ye are clean through the Logos, which I have spoken unto you. So the Lord's teaching comes to us for our pattern and for our fruitfulness. That is amazing and wonderful. It says, now ye are clean through the Logos, through the word, which I have spoken unto you, which I have taught you, so even as we are learning the word in the scriptures, you see now you are being purged off from your old conscience that he, the, the believer which is not bearing fruit, will be cut completely away. You see now you are purged from your old conscience. That is how the word purges us and brings us up onto fruition. So you now know that, hey, what the Lord desires is our fruition. What the Lord desires is our upbringing. What the Lord desires is our fruition. So, he gives us the word. You see, even as we are learning the word. You see, he, the Lord is the husband man. He's the Lord of the vine. He's the Lord of the garden. He's the Lord of the farm. And he desires in me my fruition, whom I am the branch. He desires my fruition. So now, once you hear the word, the Bible says that you become clean. You become purged of any dust, of any conscience, which is, in other words, bringing you up in your maturity or in your fruitfulness or in your fruition. You see, so the Bible says that he cleans us daily with his word. He cleans us. He purges our conscience daily. You see, so now that you have known, the word purges you up. That is why he said, for ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So you see, the Lord gives us his word, his logos, his teachings, which is able to build us up or brings up unto fruition. He's able to purge us and brings us up onto fruition. Hallelujah. I would want, to, want us to read verse 4 and see something there so that we'll, we build up there from next week. Verse 4, it says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. He said, No more can ye except ye abide in me. Hallelujah. The Bible says that abide in me, even as I am always in you. Abide in me. 
I've not seen a branch which is bearing fruit outside the stem or the branch bearing fruit outside the main plant. Why? Because it is the stem or the plant which nourishes the vine or sorry, the branch for fruit bearing. It is the stem which nourishes. So the Lord nourishes us through certain ways which brings us up into fruition. Hallelujah. I would want us to reserve this for next week. How the Lord nourishes the stem for fruition. Thank you, beloved, for having a time of sweet fellowship with me in the Word. Let's share a word of prayer. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you for your understanding. We bless you for your teaching in us. Lord, we know that you are the husbandman. We know that you are the brand which nourishes us up unto fruition. We are perched from now onwards in Jesus' name. Have we prayed? Amen. Amen. Beloved, this is your brother, Glorified Christian, sharing with you today a cutting deep into the word. I would want us to meet again next week for a blissful time of fellowship in the word. Mm -hmm.